that's okay, welcome to part two of this video. Now we have proven uh, whatever this law is, uh, we can uh, go ahead and derive uh, th what this is in terms of the metric tensor, well, in terms of derivatives of the metric tensor. So what we're going to do is you can pick whichever two of these you want and add them together. We're going to pick the top two, but there's no reason for that. Uh, we'll add drgij plus dj GRI. And what can you see is going to happen? Well, what's going to happen to... Uh, not much, actually. You're going to get this, these two terms plus these two terms. But now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the final one. And you're going to see why we're going to do this. Because, uh, let's have a look. So this term here, uh, this one here, where's that in the other one? Uh, it's here. This term here is exactly the same as this term here because this commutes, and we've shown it commutes, and of course multiplication commutes, we've known that for years. Um, so um, you add this one on in this bit, and you subtract it off in that bit. So that one has gone, and that one has gone. Okay, so now let's look at this one. This one is the same as this one up here. So this one goes, and this one goes, because we've subtracted this off. So this subtra this is subtracted off by this. So the two bits that you are left with are these bits, and they are identical, aren't they? Because once again, it commutes. So we end up with 2y differentiated with respect to rj. J, that should be. Y, um, oh wait, what am I doing? We've missed off the n. N differentiated with respect to i. OK, there you go. That's all you need because we've got this up here, we want yj, the j is obviously a dummy index, but never mind, yj ip. So what's that going to be equal to? n doesn't appear on this side because it's dummy index, so we've just replaced the dummy index with j, that's all we've done. Uh, so now we just need to replace, um, we need to divide through by half, and we need to replace i with v, r with i, and j with p, because, because these commute, you can replace either whichever way you want. But, so this is going to be equal to a half uh, d, right, what have we replaced r? We've replaced that with p i. Uh, we've replaced g i j. i has been replaced with uh, v. Yes. Uh, j has been replaced with p. Plus j has been replaced with p. r has been replaced with i. Uh, i has been replaced with v minus i has been replaced with v, g, j, r, j, r has been replaced with i, p, j, r, j was replaced with p, i, r was replaced with i. There you go, there's your expression. So finally, the Christoffel symbol, uh, by our original definition, b, i, p, was equal to all of this thing multiplied by the, by uh, g, b, v. So all we need to do is now find, uh, well, not multiply, contracted with uh, d i g v p plus d p g i v minus d v g p i. So that is our expression for um, the Christoffel symbol in terms of the metric tensor. So what does this mean? You give me a metric tensor field and I can calculate this Christoffel symbol for you, which means that I can calculate what the geodesic equation is for you from the metric tensor field, which means that I can, in principle at least, solve the geodesic equation, which is a differential equation, a system of differential equations, for the trajectory of any particle if you give me the metric tensor field. And that is so, so, so so crucial to general relativity that I cannot uh, begin to tell you how much how crucial that is. General relativity is this. This is the theory of general relativity. Space-time is a curved pseudo Riemannian manifold. Don't worry about the pseudo. That just means that uh, you can have negative distances. Why? Because uh, you'll remember from special relativity that proper time could have a negative value. It was um, Delta t squared, well, delta x zero squared. You had to have the factor of c squared if you did did delta t minus delta x one squared. And if 
uh, you went through no time and just had a spatial component, you'd get a negative answer there. So uh, in Riemannian geometry, there was no such thing as a negative metric, which is why it's called pseudo-Riemannian geometry, um, because it reflects a lot. It has a lot of the same properties, and indeed the geodesic equation still works for these silly pseudo-Riemannian metrics of, spe of general relativity. I might do a video explaining why that is, but it, hopefully you can, from what I've done here, just replace Kronecker delta with eta mu nu. All you have to do is find a coordinate system which is flat with the Minkowski metric rather than the Euclidean metric. Um, hopefully you can work out, to show for yourself then, that the um, uh, geodesic equation still holds and that the Christoffel symbols are still given by this formula. But the theory of general relativity is that there's effectively a four-dimensional manifold. On that manifold, you define the metric. You define the proper time interval between every single point, and it can be negative and it can be positive. It can't be a complex number. It is a real number. Um, so you define that, and you then lay any coordinate system you want on that um, manifold, and you describe every point on the manifold with that. And uh, you will have a metric tensor field, which will represent, which will uh, which will um, give the same geometry as your original defined metric does. And from that, we can now calculate the most natural paths things will follow through that curved manifold using the geodesic equation and using the fact that we can express the Christoffel symbols in terms of the metric tensor field. So where do you get this metric tensor field? Well, that's a big, big topic. You get it from the Einstein field equations. The Einstein field equations, you stick in a distribution of mass and it will spit you out a metric tensor field. And the genius of it is that you can do your distribution of mass, your stress energy momentum tensor, uh, relative to whatever coordinate system you want. That's the beauty of tensor equations, that despite the fact that they every, in every coordinate system you will have a different distribution of mass, you'll have a different stress energy momentum tensor, and indeed you'll have a different metric tensor field, but they still describe the same fundamental geometry. That's the beauty of tensor analysis. That's why general relativity takes the form of tensor equations and why Einstein realized it needed to take the form of tensor equations. Because despite the fact that the actual objects themselves do transform between coordinate systems, the actual underlying geometry described by the metric tensor field is the same no matter what coordinate system you are in.